Well, today, Lisa and I want to share with you the journey that we've been on over the last several weeks since Lee Beth died suddenly, which, which uh, was and still is a shock. I know that both Lisa and I are still going through the process of grief. I've preached here for 30 years. I know it's hard to believe because I look so young, but you know, Sunday by Sunday, even Saturday by Saturday when we had the Saturday night services, I've preached God's word. And this is a time where, where we have to live it out. I would say in these 30 plus years of ministry and leading at Fellowship Church, we probably have never been as weak and as vulnerable as we are right now. We've experienced difficulty and we've walked through pain, but not like this. And only by God's grace are we doing it. And in Matthew 5, 4, it says, blessed are those who mourn. Everybody mourns. Everybody experiences life and death. It's just part of life. Mm -hmm. Death is part of life. This, though, was an out-of-order death. It wasn't supposed to happen. And dealing with that adds another messy layer. And so today, we just thought we would share some of that mm -hmm. that led up to this time. Yeah, as, as a father, growing together with the family, you have these nightmarish thoughts now and then, and dad, you know what I'm talking about, where you think, well, what would happen? What would happen? How would I react if my son, my daughter, et cetera, suddenly died? I had those thoughts, like every father. I would though quickly try to mitigate them or, or get them out of my mind, and I would do a pretty good job. But when this happened, it happened right in front of me. It happened at our house. I was in our house alone with Lee Beth, and Lisa and I had even talked to her hours before about life. Mm -hmm. And we told her, and I'll, I'll tell you why we said this, that Lee Beth, if you continue doing what you're doing, you could end up dead. And she was like. And I asked her the question. I said, do you want to live? And she said, yes, absolutely. And that was about two and a half hours before yep. she passed away. Mm -hmm. So just the backstory. Yeah, here's the backstory. You know, Lee Beth was 34 years old. And, you know, our family um, I'm all right. We, um, we are all in, we've been all in, as far as a church, for 30 years. Not to retread that story again, but, you know, starting out like we did with, um, I don't know, 30 or 40 families, maybe 100 people showing up in a rented facility, and we come up here, one kid, one car. One dog. One dog, one rent house that was, well, it's infested with fire ants and big cracks down the middle of it, whatever, and Lee Beth. So, you know, we've been, as a family, and as, you know, our family has, has grown, we all participated because you know, when you're starting out, even, even now, that's just what you do. I mean, you, Lisa worked, I'm probably harder than me. I worked, and as Lee Beth grew, and as we had EJ and the twins, and we just are all in. That's why when people ask me sometimes, they go, well, wow, you, you have four kids in the ministry. How did you get them into the ministry. And, and I always say, I, I never told them to be in the ministry. Never, ever. Never baited them or, or said, okay, you need to do this. It was just sort of a 
natural thing. So Lee Beth grew up here at Fellowship Church. She's a product of Fellowship Church. She, she became a Christian here through our, through our children's ministry, Fellowship Church. In fact, it's this weekend is the anniversary of the weekend that she yep. asked Jesus into her life at Kids Church in 1991. And that's something to celebrate because yes, we, would not, we would not be standing here if it were not for the hope of Jesus that's Christ. Right. And so it's, it's an interesting thing how grief and joy can coexist. It's, it's, it's beyond my comprehension because I have such joy right now through the tears, through the story, but yet I'm grieving. But that is only possible through Christ. And the hope that Lee Beth had in her entire life from the point that she accepted Jesus Christ. And I'll never forget, we were in the Irving Art Center and she came flying out of Children's Church. And it was Valentine's yeah. weekend and they had done a message about the heart. And at that point is when she gave her heart to Jesus. And so this is very significant for us to be telling the story because we're talking about death, but we're really talking about life. Yes, we are. And this is soon thereafter, I had the opportunity to, to baptize her. She grew up what, in where I believe, I mean, selfishly is the, the best church around. And, and she had a lot of great friends, a lot of great relationships here. So fast forward it, you know, college and, and, and on and on and on. But early in Lee Best's life, you know, we saw her gifts, strengths, and also as parents, you know, you see weaknesses. And the scary part is you see your weaknesses, which I won't even get into that. But she had the unusual combination, though, of discernment, which is, is the ability to read people and put people in the right spots, and also it's the ability to see something and know if it works or not. You either have the cringe factor and you change it or you don't. She had an unusual ability with that. Furthermore, Libeth, like uh, very few people I've met, she was an original creative thinker. A lot of us, you know, can, can take ideas and take creative thoughts and, and maybe make them creative or another angle. Libeth, though, had that, had that factor. But within that, within her giftedness and love for the church, Libeth really struggled with loneliness, mm -hmm. especially, and depression. And it's something that we all know is real. You know, I've talked about depression. I've talked about how we have struggled with it. Many people in the church have. I've gone through bouts where I felt depressed before I'm sure, anxiety. I, I'm sure I was and anxiety. anxiety. So, so she, she had that. And, you know, as, as Lee Beth got older, I think it, it sort of, um, it sort of increased. And about five or six years ago, she, as she was working in our church and everything, she, she got involved in a relationship because she obviously wanted to get married. Like, you know, women, women have, you have that desire if you're, if you, if you didn't know it, they do. To, I to, did. To get married. And, and a, a relationship, like many of them, this relationship did not work out. It was uh, sort of tumultuous. So several months later, I'll, I'll uh, never forget this. She actually she, called okay. me and said, Mom, I'm afraid I'm an alcoholic. And that... Yeah, that, that rocked us. So here Lisa texted me that, called me. And, and Lee Beth has never been like a drinker, you know, or, or, or someone who partied zero. And that was uh, something that definitely snapped our heads. So at that point, we had, we were out of town, so we're going back as fast as possible catching the next flights back to Dallas. So in the meantime, Dina Tronis, who, who works with Lisa, went and picked up Lee Beth. Mm -hmm. Took her to the doctor. And, and while she was um, on her way back from the doctor, Lee Beth had a seizure. 
again, this is about five and a half, six years ago. Dina, in turn, quickly called the paramedics. The paramedics took her to the hospital and we got there finally. And the doctor walked in, were we in ICU? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll never forget what the doctor said. The doctor said, you know, young lady, you, know, you can't do this, Lee Beth, because I don't drink. I just did this one time. I started drinking and couldn't stop. And he said, if you continue to do this, you, you, you will die. Yeah, so she had her first episode that I described of binge drinking. A second. The second episode, which led to, to rehab. rehab. So then she came out of that and met with a, a great therapist daily, went to classes, 12 steps. Ed and I have both read the entire AA book. It's fabulous. You should all read it. Yeah, I would, I would recommend that. You know, my brother, Ben, who has his, uh, I always say this, but he has his earned doctorate in theology. Ben will say that book is the greatest book on what the church should be and could be ever written yeah. next to the Bible. So Lisa and I read that. It was like a, I don't well, know, you don't a punch think, to the you solar don't, plexus. You don't think you're going to be reading that for one of your family members. No. You just don't. Yeah, you're like reading it. So I'm going, I, I can't believe that. But that's life. I know that is. That here, you start thinking this. I'm a pastor. Good guy. Of course, you know, I'm a sinner like everyone. But I'm thinking, here, we've done this. I've done that. And my daughter is in rehab and I mean this is just me I don't mean I can care less about what people think but I mean just like I'm, I'm thinking to myself man Ed, where did you where did you mess up what what did you do what did you do wrong you know and then you have the proverbial question that I'll get into in a little while why so from there Libeth did so so well and, and we did counseling with her. I still knew intuitively it would be a struggle. Mm -hmm. Not her work here. I never really doubted that, but just when she was away from the office in her house alone, that, that was uh, where she got into to trouble. So three weeks ago, we had noticed, Monday, a, we yeah, had we noticed, noticed a little, a little bit, of a bit change through the holidays and yep. just, you know, the pandemic and we were working from home and she even asked Ed, she said, dad, are, are, do we have to work at home? And he said, no, you can go to the office. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I didn't know either. Obviously you didn't know that she was, I mean, I felt it a little bit, but she was really, really reaching out, you know? And I said, yeah, you know, and cause I figured yeah, alone, COVID. And three weeks ago. Yeah, three weeks ago. Or thereabouts. We just knew that Lee Beth was a little, acting a little bit different. And, and I called her, and I had just landed in South Carolina to visit my mother. Lee Beth FaceTimed, and I was like, that's kind of strange, and then a quick hang-up. So I called her, and she didn't sound good. And so I called Ed, and I said, honey, Lee Beth's not good. He goes, what do you mean? And I said, it's just not good. You need to go. And so he did, and he found her. And yeah, my, my first response was uh, when I heard that and thought about so much. My first response was was anger. I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" Yeah. And I went over there, and I um, wow, can't explain it. And I, I, there's there's no use to get into it. But as a father, uh, as a parent, it's something that you know. I pray that you don't have to get involved in. So. We went that evening to, to see her therapist. I was there with her the whole time from pretty much noon, 11 o'clock until, until then. So we went home and it was uh, a little bit later, probably eight or nine o'clock at night. EJ and Jess have been, EJ's of course our son and Jess is our daughter in love. They have been living in our, our pool house because uh, uh, they preparing, they're preparing to, to buy a house, house and they just bought one and I'm sure they're thrilled <laughs> to to move out. But 
thank God they were on the premises because what happened was, you know, Libeth was, uh, you know, she talked, I mean, EJ and Jess came in. We talked to Libeth, and you know, Jess is a nurse, and, and Jess so, helped with yeah, some of the things. Helped and, with some of the things, and, and, uh, and you and I talked. I, yeah, we FaceTimed, we talked FaceTime, I and FaceTimed and Le- with Libeth, and, and that's and, when she said, mm-hmm. I want to live. I want to be mm-hmm. better. I want to get over this, and I want to do what's right. Yeah. She expressed those things to us. And so then, we uh, put her in, we have a little uh, kind of a playroom where the, where the grandkids play. And it is a day bed. And so I wanted to leave Beth there so I could hear her and everything. And, you know, she was, she was shaking and she said, dad, I'm shaking. And, and she sh- that was exhibited that it, behavior yeah. before. And I said, you're just coming off, Lee Beth, this alcohol that you have, um, that you've consumed. And so, you know, I, sat down by her and kissed her and rubbed her back a little bit. And then it was a little bit later. So I went uh, and, and worked out. I have a Peloton right near this playroom. I did the Peloton and she came in a little bit while I was working out and she said, I just, I feel just so anxious. I said. And you asked her if she I said, wanted to go to you the want to go to the hospital? She goes, no, no, I just feel anxious. So she went back and then I went back in there to check on her. Afterwards, she was doing great. Kissed her again. I said, Lee Beth, I love you. And I said, I'm going to go into my office and study. And the study, my, my study is maybe 50 feet, 40 feet from this spot, maybe. So I had the door open. Her door was open. And I was studying for a message on Abraham and Isaac. You know, we've been reading through the chronological Bible and the story of Abraham and Isaac. God established that covenant with Abraham and then God tested Abraham later on with, with his son Isaac. So I was, I was studying that. And when Abraham and Isaac went to the altar, and this spot ultimately was a spot where Jesus was crucified. One day maybe I can, I can preach the message again. But So, so I, I wrote down in my notes, and, and I, have, I have a copy of them right there. This is what I was writing when Lee Beth passed. Genesis 22, seven, see at the bottom? So I'm writing, where's the lamb? Because Isaac wondered, where, where's the lamb for the sacrifice? And then I wrote, the Lord will provide. My next line, laid him on altar on top of the wood. And then I heard a noise I ran in, I knew something was wrong. And she had a seizure. She was, uh, when I saw her, I thought she was gone right there. So pulled her off the bed, went outside, got Jess and EJ and they were, they were unbelievable. Um, so unflappable under pressure. So Jess started performing CPR along with EJ we called, you know, the ambulance, and then I, I worked on her a little bit. Then the ambulance got there. They could find no pulse, but they did find a faint heartbeat. And as they were working on her, I was just praying, God, heal her. God, in the name of Jesus, heal her, heal her. And then after a while, they took her away. And because of COVID, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't ride in the... Uh, can ride in the ambulance. So from there, we had, you know, some great friends show up. Obviously, family and, and, and Lisa was, um, again, FaceTiming. She was in South Carolina. So the doctor came in and I'll never forget what he said. He said, we, we can't do anything else. Uh, we checked her brain and there's not any activity, so we, anyway. Well, I think there's a test that they do for activity, mm-hmm. but it was more that her blood had, um, the chemicals were all out of balance in her extremities. There was no mm-hmm. blood flow, and they just, he just said it's its not gonna be, I mean, it's she's, not gonna not, happen. she's not gonna live. So. And you know, I don't know. I 
mean, I don't know what to say other than that is not what we wanted. And that's not what she wanted. But we've learned so much out of this. And um, And then too, I think Lisa. And God has provided. That's all I can say is God has provided. Yes. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. If somebody were to read my journal, they would think I'm a crazy woman. Mm-hmm. But unless they know Jesus, they That's if right. they know Jesus, they wouldn't think I'm a crazy That's person. Right. But if somebody else is reading mm-hmm. it, they don't understand because I have this joy because my daughter, my baby, that that we stood on a church stage and dedicated to the Lord. Yep. And we meant it when we said, God, she's yours. She is yours. And it was a beautiful 34 years, not a perfect 34 years. No. We've just shared with you very vulnerably and very authentically some of the hardships. But I want to tell you something. There is a lot more good and God in the best 34 years than there was the challenge. That's right. Because I've received and Ed's received and the kids have received text after text after text and card saying, My children accepted Christ in kids' faith, and Lee Beth invited us to the downtown campus. Mm -hmm. Or I was new to fellowship, and this happened. I mean, just on and on. And it's not like it's not like she. They say, "Oh, I knew your daughter. She was a beautiful girl. Oh, I'm you know I'm so sorry. Whatever." They have specific things that God used her to do in her time on this earth, and that should be all of our prayers. All of our and, prayers, because we don't know the time frame that we have. No. And, Lisa, and guess you know, what? That's not important. It's about the eternity that we have. That's what's important. And you know, someone told me that we can't judge Lee Beth based on that last Decision. bout yeah. that, that, that she made, the last thing that she did. But it's really about the last thing that Jesus did, isn't it, on the cross. That's what her life is about. So. That's the story. Yeah, so she should be judged by that. And and that's that's basically the story. So EJ and I were with her. Lisa was in the airport flying back. And we FaceTimed when she took her last breath. And we were, um, I think Sam was leading us in um, worship songs, and she went from this life yeah. to and I'll to, just to tell you that my sister and I, I called my sister, and she sat with me from 11 o'clock to midnight in Eastern time. Mm-hmm. We tried to figure out flights. I got to the airport. She sat with me on a bench outside security, and we sang to the top of our lungs. Mm-hmm. That's right. We sang and praised Jesus. And my prayer was that I would not get on the plane before I knew that she had entered eternity. And he answered that as we sat on that bench. And you know what I said I said with my sister? I said, Thank you, God, you answered my prayer. That's right. You know, the the, the learnings what 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 God has shown Lisa and I, and I've um, done a lot of journaling as well. And and I think that's brilliant what you said, Lisa. That no one will really understand it unless they know mm-hmm. know the Lord. But in in our talking with people, and this is a, a word I think that we can all apply. Feelings, you know, are real, and that's nothing profound, but they're real. God has feelings, as you've heard me talk about, preach about from God's word. And we're to feel our feelings. That's good to feel our feelings. But every feeling will fade. Let me say that again. Every feeling will fade from the feeling of we're newlyweds, that fades. The feeling of, wow, 34 years ago, Lee Beth came into the world, those feelings faded. Sadness, and sadness, loneliness, loneliness, happiness, and, and what, all of those things. And what, and what breaks our heart is that Lee Beth made three, we know of because of the binge drinking, three bad decisions during 
those bad feelings. So be very, very careful in that. And, and you know, of course, you think about why and what if and regret. Wow, Lee Beth, if you only had picked up the phone and called someone when you felt lonely, when you felt like you were going down that rabbit hole as opposed to grabbing the bottle of wine, if you had only done that. But, you know, as believers, we don't, we don't stand on explanations. We stand on the promises of God. Yeah. Yeah. And that is, that is so, so important. I'm a, I'm a why guy. I just am. I think guys naturally are more why humans than women. I think women are too. But I want to ask why. God, why? I mean, Lisa and I have lived a life. Why? We were virgins until we got married. Why? We gave our lives to you at early ages. Why? We never really rebelled. Why? We started Fellowship Church. Why? You know, all that. You start thinking, man, I... I, we, we, why, 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 why? And we will never know, ever, the answer to and that if, question. If God explained it to us, it we, wouldn't take away our grief. No. We'd still be grieving. But we might yet, feel a little bit better, but we would still, yeah. we still have loss. So explanations are not what we and then, lean into. We lean on the promises of God. But that's, but that's also difficult because... I still struggle with that song. I struggle with the images of Finding Lee Beth. I struggle with the images, the memories of her as a little baby and coaching her in basketball and all those things, you know, from homecoming queens, all this stuff. I, I, I struggle with that. And I'm like, here, all these people, I'm just going to tell you, drink like fish. I've been around some of them in my life, as you, as you know. And they binge drink along with all sorts of pills and powders and everything else you can think of. And they're, they're as healthy as a horse. Walking around. Walking around. Yet here's Lee Beth. We know three binge episodes. episodes. Could have been more. We know the three. She's gone. And I want to say, God, why? I don't mean in a, in, a, in, a, in a mean way, but God can take our anger. Why, why, why? But God is bigger. He is. I've, I'm, I'm learning this, not learn, learning this. God's bigger than my whys or me thinking the God of the universe owes me an explanation. I know too, that through this, Lisa and I will never be the same. I don't, I don't mean that our personalities are going to change, but I know that we will be different. I've heard it said, you know, we will walk with the limp for the rest of our lives. We'll have a wound that is soft to the touch. But the weight, and this is, uh, and, and I want you to share a little bit about this too, but already the weight that we've been carrying has, has made us stronger up until this point. And we know the importance, of course, of weight lifting. It does make you stronger. But in, in my research, I've, I've discovered that the most traumatic events that can occur in a person's life, more so than going to the front lines, or more so than a prison sentence, is losing a child or losing a spouse. So, my, my nature was to come back, to start speaking all the time again, and through, again, counseling, I was, uh, counseled and told just to wait a little while longer until I jump back in. But you, you, you see what God has done. We have such an amazing team, Unbelievable. such an amazing church that we're not going to miss a beat, probably even be better. 
So yes, it makes us different or we won't ever be the same, but we will be better. Because when God gives you that weight to carry, he gives it to you for that purpose. That's right. And so we're, we're gonna be better. And we just so appreciate the fact that um, God has God has built Fellowship Church and that we got to be a part of it. That's and right. we get to be a part of it. And that as we grieve, you have grieved. Mm -hmm. And as we have loved Lee Beth, you have loved Lee Beth. And we know who holds the future. We have no doubt about it. Jesus is on his throne. Be in prayer for us over the next several weeks as we continue to walk through this and heal. Also be in prayer for our family. Let's and, bring and them up here. Come yeah, on. I want you guys to come, here, come up here. We just wanted to share. Because we don't want to close, we want to close this yes. with that purpose and, and, and we would love and are honored that they're standing with us. Mm -hmm. As Ed's father says, it, our family feels lighter. Lighter. That's what dad said. But we're here and God's working. And it's not about our feelings. And, it's about and you, know, him. you know something too, Lisa, and, and I think you, you guys un understand my, uh, my heart when I, when I say this. I know, because it is, death is a very, very uncomfortable subject. And when someone finds out that Lisa and I, pastors, have, have lost a child, it's almost like they, they really get fearful because they think, if that can happen to you, a tragic situation, then that means that they could happen to me. And I, I understand that, I, I, I get that. But what we're saying is, God is faithful. I mean, this word has washed us, changed us, the prayers have comforted us, consoled us, strengthened us. You have, with your friendship, with your love, the words, the text, they mean and they speak volumes. So I just, I just wanted to say that. And I also wanted to say too, Lisa, that we will do church with a greater urgency than ever before because we've been so close and we are so close to Eternity. One moment, Lee Beth was alive. The next moment, she's in eternity. And all of us have a tissue-like veil separating this life from the next. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be Mark Zuckerberg. You could be LeBron James, Cardi B. I don't care who you are. Donald Trump, Joe Biden. It doesn't matter. Every single person dies. We don't want to think about it. We joke about it. We run away from it, everyone dies. And death is the great equalizer. You're not ready to live, let me say it again, until you're ready to die. Have you made the decision? Because you're gonna live forever after you die. In one of two places, Jesus said, either with me, Christ said, or without me, in heaven or in hell. And right now, you can make this decision to change your forever. Won't you pray this prayer with me? I don't care where you are, doesn't matter what you're involved in, pray with me. And when you have the faith, even of a mustard seed, the tiny mustard seed, Jesus will come into you and change your life and give you a new heart. That is the prayer that our daughter, Lee Beth, prayed years ago, right here at Fellowship Church, to make her faith decision. That's why we know where she is. So with Lee Beth, we didn't say goodbye. When she breathed her last breath, EJ and I said, Lee Beth, we'll see you later. Would you pray with me? Father, as our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I know that so many people, many, many people who are experiencing this need to experience you. You've tried so many different things to bring you satisfaction. You might have tried possessions and maybe you tried 
pleasure and maybe it's, I don't know, popularity or prestige, I don't know. Yet you know in your heart of hearts, there's an emptiness, there's a void. And that's the God gap, that gap that only he can fill. Well, I've got some good news for you. God sent Jesus Christ to do something, to, to live righteously, to die sacrificially, to rise bodily. Jesus Christ took your sins and mine upon himself. He died. And Jesus even questioned the Father when he was hanging on the cross. He said, why, why God are you forsaking me? God the Father had to turn his back on the Son because God couldn't look at sin. Jesus became sin, your sin and mine. He took it, he died. He was buried, he rose again. And now, check this out, the God of the universe offers us life eternal. You might be going, well, Ed, as, as I'm praying, how do I make that decision? It's a simple step, but it's the most significant step you'll ever make. Just simply say these words. Just say, God, that's right. Just say, God, I admit to you that I'm a sinner. I turn from my sins. I repent. And I turn to you, Jesus. I believe, to the best of my knowledge, that you, Jesus, died on the cross for my sins. And right now, during this time, I ask you to come into my life, to forgive me, to cleanse me. I give you everything I am and everything I'll ever be. Jesus Christ, take control of me. Thank you, Lord, for rescuing and saving, I believe, so many. Thank you for your grace, which is undeserved. Thank you for your love. Thank you for heaven. And Father, I pray right now that those here and those all over the place who prayed that prayer will understand and walk in the implications and the process of knowing you, that they would get involved in a Bible teaching and Bible believing church, that they would discover their uniqueness as we continue to push the ball down for your glory. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, you can click a button on the screen, which will give you like some steps on what to do next. If you're here at one of our different facilities, you see this little booklet that I've written called Next Step. Please pick that up and read it. I would also encourage you to go to our VIP area and say, hey, I just prayed with Ed and Lisa to give my life to Christ. Because I'm gonna tell you something, heaven just got bigger because of so many prayers that were prayed. And that is awesome because Fellowship Church, we want to populate heaven and definitely depopulate hell. So thank you again for this time. Thank you for your love and support, and we'll see you very, very soon.